Hi friends. Uh, today is Monday, October 16th. I am Amy Pagan and this is Amy Pagan Art. We meet every Monday at noon on Facebook and YouTube and we make some fun little art. Um, and we and we talk and we share jokes and we just kind of get our week off to a good start. This class is completely free. Um, you do not have to buy any special supplies. I'm gonna demonstrate using watercolors and colored pencils. You can use markers, you just use whatever you want, okay? Um, I will show you what I'm using um, in case you wanna buy similar supplies or you just want some advice. Uh, do not feel pressured to buy anything at all. I don't make any money off of that. I just like to share the things that work for me. Okay, so um, today we're going to be doing spider webs, and I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. Um, so we have the using uh, black on white paper, and then you can also use black paper if you want to have a different effect. Um, so for this one with the black on white, I used Canson 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. And I used my um, Prima Marketing Art Philosophy Classics. Um, I do like this particular black. If you wanna just buy one of theirs, it is number 12, but you'll find it in a bunch of their different kits. Um, also use whatever you want. You can also use a black pen. Um, Sharpies are some of my favorites. Um, I was gonna show you one, but apparently I've moved elsewhere. It's fine. Um, just, you know, the thin point uh, Sharpies. I like those a lot. Um, use whatever you want. If you only have a ballpoint pen today, use it. Who cares? It's your art. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Before we get started, let's um, remember why we're here. Why are we here, you guys? We're here to have a good time. We're not gonna be painting the Sistine Chapel today. I don't want you to stress. This is just for fun. Uh, relax, maybe learn some new techniques, give it a try. And, uh, and make sure you finish all the way to the end. And when you're all finished, please take a picture. That's for two reasons. Number one, um, I think that when you take a picture, walk away and look at your picture, you see all different kinds of new things. And frankly, every single time I've done that, I've found something new to love about my art. Um, and I think that you will feel the same way. Number two, that's so you can put your picture in the comments and share it with us um, so we can all support one another and give each other awesome feedback and, um, and go, yay, you did it. Um, and also it makes me a better teacher. I guess that's three reasons. <laughs> it makes me a better teacher to see, um, you know, how you guys are doing. Uh, and number four, it makes me feel awesome. So thanks. Thanks for those of you who share. I really appreciate it. You can also just DM it to me if you want to. Um, past projects, if you're interested. Most recently, we did this awesome little froggy. Um, here he is done with colored pencil and here he is with watercolor. We did pumpkins. This is watercolor. This is colored pencil. We did candy corn. Um, we did some cute little ghosties. And, uh, and here's one little little ghost deal by himself. You could do any of that. Okay. Um, if you want to find any of those, you can look on uh, Facebook or YouTube at Amy Pagan Art. Those are all just waiting there for you. Okay, you guys. If you promise to be kind to yourself, be nice, finish your project, and, um, and, and uh, be kind to you. Give me a heart or a thumbs up. Um, and yeah, share this class if you want to. Get your friends um, creating with you. Okay, ready? This paper is a four by six, um, which is the size of a postcard. So I didn't buy it that way. I just bought a regular regular pack of Canson paper and then uh, just folded it, tore it so it has this nice little edge. Um, if you are using watercolor paper, you're gonna wanna have your bumpy side up. I'm gonna scooch this over here so we have our example and then the one we're working on. Okay, normally we start out with pencil sketches. We're not gonna do that today, you guys. Whatever medium you're using, pencil, paint, crayon, marker, you're just gonna do it. We're gonna wing it and you're gonna be great. All right, let me get my paints ready. Do, do, do. We're gonna put it, I'm gonna put it right over here. 
Oh yeah, for my uh, for the black on white, I did use my Posca pen. You can also use white watercolor if you've got it. You can use, um, where are you, friend? Here, let me show you. One of my favorites, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. You can use that. Um, you can use white crayons. Use whatever you want. Okay, if you're using a brush, the brush that I'm using today is my Princeton Select Round Number One. You can also use um, a number six. I know I use those all the time. Um, you can use whatever brand you want. All right, I'm gonna rinse my brush in the water. Here, let me show you. Remember never to leave your brushes sitting in the cup like that. That ruins the lovely little point. Go like this. If you have, and then uh, drag it along the side so you don't have big drippies on the side of your paintbrush. Um, Drippies will get all over your paper and make you sad. Okay, so our thought process here. Let's look over here. Can you see these big arches? That's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna do some big arches and then we're gonna build off of it. I know this looks complicated. Mine is gonna look different from this, the one that I did today. Um, this is one I did yesterday. And yours is gonna look different. Part of this is really making it your own. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna walk you through it, don't worry. Okay, here we go. I'm putting a little bit of paint right on the tip of my brush, a little bit of black, and I am going to do a big letter U. So here's the side of my paper, I'll probably give myself like a thumbprint, and I'm gonna come all the way to the other side with a thumbprint left. Let's see, scooch, scooch. All right, ready? I'm just gonna make a real thin line. The best way to make a thin line is to have your paintbrush um, facing as much up and down as you can. Um, the further over you lean, the fatter your line will be. All right, ready? That's it, oh, it didn't go, okay, there we go. Ta-da! And you see how it stopped there, and so now it's like got a little, um, you can kind of see the difference a little bit. It doesn't matter, it'll be fine. Why is this shaking? Everyone calm down, okay. Um, let's do another one. All right, I'm gonna, you can see how it got a lot lighter um, so that just means I need to add a little more water and I'm going to dip it in the paint again. I'm going to do a little swishy. Um, usually we like have to like measure and see what is happening. Oh, I'm touching it. Sorry. Okay. There, now I'm not touching anymore. Um, okay. So usually we have to like measure stuff and say like, how big is it? It's fine. It doesn't matter this time because we're just making spider webs and there's going to be different every single time. Okay. And then obviously we're going to do our spider later, but we'll talk about that. Okay, so I have some big loops, right? Um, and now I need to think about how they would attach to the wall. See these little Ys? We're just gonna branch some of these off. Doesn't matter how big or how little you make it, just kind of branch it because your little spider is not going to count on her whole spider web being attached by one little string. She's gonna say, no, I need several. See that? So we're just gonna make these some little Y's. Now, here's the fun part where we're really gonna make it our own. We're gonna add lots of more lines and then we're gonna think inside those lines about making them more spider web like So you remember in school when you would do your spider webs? And here, let's just draw one real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so one of the things when you're learning to do spider webs in school, you do them like for Halloween contests, you do like X's and then you'd connect like with a little circle in between, right? Little curvy line, little curvy line, little curvy line, little curvy line. And you can totally do it like that. What we're doing right now is looking at the spider web hanging sideways. This is sideways. So we're gonna think about this shape if it was sideways. Ready? Okay, we're going to divide these up. So I'm going to say, okay, here's this line, here's this line. I'm going to connect them with a curvy line. And then I'm going to make more curvy lines with the fattest part facing out. So here, see the distance between here and here? So that's my fat end. So I'm going to put an upside down U on the fat end. And then I'm going to do another one and another one. 
And then maybe I'll divide it with a few more lines going to that little point. And now we can see that spider web shape in the spider web. This spider web, she has been spinning this for so long, it's fallen apart, it's gotten back together. She repairs it, it falls apart some more. Um, so that's why we have lots of awesome little pieces. Um, see that drippy right there? There we go, okay. All right, so here's a little line and there's a line there. So I'm gonna make a triangle kind of point, like a letter V, see how it's a letter V now? And I'm going to go round, 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 round. Does it look too fat to you? It does to me, so let's divide it in the middle. Ha ha, all right, let's do another one. Making a little letter V. And then I'm doing Kirby's. Now, if you are doing this on black paper, you would use white, but you're gonna use the very same kind of strokes. And we're just gonna rinse and add, oh, look at my drippies, y'all. Not following my own advice today. Okay, let's make some more letter V's in between our lines. Okay, there's one, there's one. So now we have a V and what are we gonna do? We're going to do a curvy line, a curvy line, a curvy line, a curvy line, and then maybe do another line in between. Let's build off of this one. Okay, here's one side of my V. There's the other. Look at that. A curvy line, a curvy line, a curvy line, a curvy line. Curvy line, curvy line, curvy line, curvy line. See how we're doing? We're building lots of little spots where our spider girly was uh was fixing her web um and then we can add even more let's see here's a little v that's going to go up to the ceiling curvy line curvy line curvy line curvy line and then i'm gonna do some more little lines in between Oop, and she's got little v's at the top so we're basically just dividing everything into V's and then adding curvy lines. Now, if we wanna add more pieces hanging down, here's this curvy line here, here's this curvy line. We can do another curvy line, just a letter U, and then let's divide up in between there. The nice thing about this project is, Let's say you make a boo-boo and your curvy line isn't as curvy as you want or your straight line isn't as straight as you want. It's okay because it's a spider web. And maybe, maybe it was falling apart and she had to go in there and fix it. Right? So it doesn't have to be perfect. Speaking of falling apart, let's make this thing look like it is falling apart because she has been living in this old, old Victorian house and nobody's been cleaning the ceiling. So we're gonna have lots of little pieces hanging down, see that? That's where her little web was sort of falling apart and she hasn't gotten over there to, uh, to clean up the extra bits yet. So we're just doing some little lines hanging straight down. She'll get around to fixing them eventually, but she just hasn't yet. Um, and those can be any length you want. You can have them go all the way down your page. I'd leave like maybe a fingerprint at the bottom, fingerprints worth of space at the bottom, um, just for the ease of composition on the eye. Um, now I would encourage you all to share your jokes and comments and questions in the comments section of this video. I am back um, from our trip to, um, well, we did a lot of things. One of the things we did was stop and see some uh, very old buildings. My daughter is super into creepy stuff right now. She's a teenager, they do that. Um, so. <laughs> Um, she wanted to go see some really old houses that had fun ghost stories. So we did that. Um, one of the places we stopped, and y'all, I'm just doing the same thing over and over. I'm just making lines and connecting. I hope you can find this really peaceful. Um, one of the places we stopped was the Woodstock Opera House. 
um, in Woodstock, Illinois. Um, it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And it of course has some fun stories to go along with it. It is still a functioning opera house. It was built in the 1800s. Um, and when we were there, they had um, a Harry Potter show going on. So not the movie, but there's a stage show. Um, I believe it was like a comedy based on Harry Potter. And um, so that's what they had going on right now. So if you are in the area, I encourage you to stop by, go look at their website, maybe pick up some tickets. Um, they also have a really cute little cafe right next to the Opera House. Um, it was a really cute little town, Woodstock, Illinois. Um, we stopped and also had hamburgers while we were there. My husband had looked up and found um, good reviews for this one hamburger restaurant. And um, one, <laughs> we were looking at the menu and I just like kept thinking like something, I, I was just, I kept thinking like I, I'm missing something, I'm missing something. And then I was looking at the names of the hamburgers and they had really weird names. Like one was named uh, the Bill Murray. Now Bill Murray is um, a very popular, famous re um, resident of Illinois. Uh, specifically Chicago, um, but I couldn't figure out why stuff was named after him. And then I noticed another hamburger was named the Groundhog, not because it is made from groundhogs, <laughs> but because we were in the town where the movie Groundhog Day was filmed. Um, and it took me quite a while to figure that out. And then I looked out the window and saw a big mural um, of the movie. And then I realized that the park, that the opera house, is right in front of was the park um, where they filmed a large part of the movie uh, where Puxatawney Phil um, was supposed to be. <laughs> um, and they had like the snowball fight, all that. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and if you haven't seen the movie, it's constantly on TV, uh, particularly around Groundhog Day, you'll see it all the time. Um, so anyway, so that was kind of cool. And then we also stopped by, let's keep going. We stopped by um, this old house called the Shipley House uh, because it was built by George Shipley. And um, I did put this, if you want more of the story, it's on my Instagram, um, which is Amy Pagan Art on Instagram. Um, but um, the whole house was built without any 90 degree angles. So like, you know, 90 degree angle, like a corner. So everything is curved. Even the front door was curved, and I don't just mean like curved like they made a round door. The door itself, like the wood was curved like this. So the door like would open like that. It was so weird, y'all. It was really interesting. Um, and there's some some cool stories behind all that. Um, and I did put more of that on my Instagram if you want to see it. I think some of it's on my Facebook, but I can't remember. I like doing... Um, Stuff that has pictures sometimes works better on Instagram. It's easier to find pictures. So that's that's where I put the majority of my stuff. Did y'all see the eclipse? If you live down in this part of the world, we had it wasn't a total eclipse, but it was a it was pretty close. It was a really cool eclipse. Um so we were in the backyard this weekend watching that. And I think, honestly, the coolest part was the, um, the shadows. The shadows on the ground were so interesting. Um, I did take some pictures. So if you are not in our area and you don't know what I'm talking about, you can look on Instagram. I think that the front facing photo is my dogs wearing their Eclipse sunglasses. Um, and then, <laughs> but there's more, there's pictures of the shadows and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, okay. So I have a lot of web going on here. I bet you do too. You know what we're missing? A spider. Okay. So let's do our spider. Um, and she is, her body is probably the size of my pinky fingernail. Okay. So just wherever you want, let's add her in here. And we're just going to do a little oval.
And again, you can draw your oval. You can paint your oval. You just do whatever you want. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of white there in the middle. Like she's got a little reflection. Okay. And then I'm going to do a little teeny tiny semicircle, and that's her head right there at the top. And if I can make tiny lines, eek, eek, those are her little, little pinchers that she's got in the front. Okay, so then we want to think about her legs. Okay, so spiders do not have like one knee, right? They, every leg they have is divided in four pieces. So let's do that and they kind of, watch how it kind of bends in a semicircle. So I'm gonna do one, that's one piece, two, three, see how I'm coming towards like in a semicircle, four. All right, let's do it again on this side, ready? So I'm thinking semicircle, but I'm doing it in four little lines. One, coming out, two, straight up, three, to this side, four, right there in the middle. Okay, and do it, these next legs sort of face more out, but they are still semicircles. One, two, three, four. One coming out, two up, three, four. The next legs are pretty small. We're just gonna do little semicircles. And then these back legs, see how they hang down? Same sort of semicircle as the top, so almost like if we had a leaf shape coming up this way, we're gonna do it down this way. One going out, two straight down, three facing in, four facing in. One out. One down, two, three, four. And that's our spider. Now our spider is not floating. She would have her little string of web. So let's give her that. I'm gonna grab a little more paint on my bristle. And I'm gonna go from her little paws, her little front hands there, all the way up to my web. This part of my web is so light, you can't really see it. I'm just gonna make it a little darker. And you can give her as many little spider friends as you want. Um, I just did the one because I wanted that like visually to have somewhere for your eye to focus, but you just do as many as you want. And you can keep going with the spider web really all day if you want. You can add as much as you want. Just think about when you attach it to the wall, give it that little Y shape. Have as many extra pieces as you want. Divide it into as many triangles as you want. Now I did these today in black and in white, but you don't have to do that. You can use whatever colors you want. Um, you know, really make it your own. Totally, totally up to what you wanna do. Um, and then, you know, you can have as many like little little wispy bits hanging down as you want. Maybe this one's kind of flying in the wind. So I'm gonna kind of make it jiggly. There's a breeze coming through. Okay, and then, if you haven't already, please check in the comments because you guys are so good about leaving uh, questions and comments and uh, funny jokes. Um, I know we can always count on our Jenna for leaving us funny jokes. Thank you, Jenna. Um, but you're all welcome to do that. I love hearing from all of you. Please let me know what other kind of things you want to make and, and I'll put them on the list and we'll make them happen. Now, don't forget to sign your work. Whatever you have done today is truly your work. All I did was show you a technique. You made it your own. Um, please make sure that you take a picture of this and either put it in the comments or send it to me on a DM. Please make sure that you let me know other things that you wanna create. Um, other things coming up. Um, I have a painting that is going to be auctioned off at For the Love of Art at the Art Center Plano. Um, that's gonna be this Saturday. You can go to Art Center Plano's website for more information on that. And all the money raised from that goes directly to Art Center Plano to help support other local artists. Other things I have going on. I am teaching a class on how to make sugar skulls, um, and that is going to be the last Thursday of this month. This is a ticketed event. Again, it will be at the Art Center, 
Um, if you want tickets, just go to um, my Instagram or my Facebook. Um, oh, and I need to put it up on my website. I'll get that done right now. <laughs> um, and, uh, and that's where you can buy tickets. They are on Eventbrite. Um, and in that class, we will all meet up at the Art Center and um, I will walk you through how to make sugar skulls, but also the history behind them and my family history with them. Um, so yeah, I would love to have you join us. Um, I did have a question about what ages were um, allowed to participate in the sugar skulls. If you are old enough to sit still and listen to me talk <laughs> and, uh, and, and make sugar skulls on a Thursday night, you're welcome to come. Um, if you think your your child would get bored or um, or that, you know, just use your best judgment. I'm not going to turn anybody away. Um, I want you all to be able to participate, but it is on a Thursday night, so it is on a school night. Um, I am going to have some other classes coming up that are specifically geared uh, for my younger friends, um, and so I will be posting and talking about those soon. You guys, you did it. Good job. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday. I hope you have a fantastic week. I know the world is kind of crazy lately. Um, and I hope that doing art brings you a sense of peace and calm. Um, I truly care about each and every one of you. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining me. I will see you right back here next Monday at noon at Amy Pagan Art on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. You guys take care. Bye.